Hey guys, Jared back again. So, it's been a while since I've done a ROM video on the Samsung Galaxy S3 i9300. That's the i9300, not the North American version, just in case you're wondering. And I kind of wanted to start off with the boot animation, just so you can kind of see the cool effects it gives you. Obviously, it doesn't really boost the performance of your ROM or anything like that, but it's neat to look at, as well as give you an idea of how quickly it boots. Now, starting under the lock screen here, um, this is actually a setting that I've enabled uh, in the settings itself, obviously, which gives you the ability to use this sort of carousel lock screen effect for all the different widgets. Um, and of course, because it's AOKP, it does come with its own standard um, custom AOKP widget. Now, I'm going to show you something else as we go along in the settings here, uh, some cool stuff that has to do with the lock screen, but we're going to start off with the home screens here. You'll notice, obviously, See that it's just got standard, you know. It's I mean, this, this is like the uh, bleh, cyanogen mod <laughs> launcher trebuchet, which works just fine. AOSP. Uh, this obviously is Jellybean 4.2.1, and that gives us a whole bunch of cool options that come with cyanogen mod 10.1 as well as AOKP ROM. So starting out with the status bar here, you'll notice we can pull it down. We actually get the option to load our own custom backgrounds there, which is cool. This one is obviously something that I've loaded myself. It isn't just sort of in the gallery itself. This isn't a wallpaper. If you are interested in finding wallpapers like this, I recommend you go to the Play Store and download Wallbase. It's a fantastic app for discovering really, really high quality, um, awesome Android sort of based wallpapers among others. Now with that said as well, oops, I totally bunged that up. I'll go ahead here. I don't know what I did there. Uh, pulling down on the right side, you can also access your quick toggles, which is great. But what's more is if you slide your thumb along the bottom there, you'll notice that I can actually switch and toggle between the notification panel as well as the settings. Uh, settings as well as the tog the quick toggles there. So we'll jump into settings as it were and we'll jump into the AOKP side of things I suppose jumping uh, from there into general UI a lot of you guys are really familiar with a lot of this stuff But for some of you that are new to the channel and new to rooting new to ROMs and things like that There's a lot of great stuff you can do in here such as change your custom carrier labels and so on I'm not really gonna go through a lot of that so I don't bore my existing um, ROM lovers that already know about most of this stuff, uh, but I will show you some of the cool things such as the end kill all button and the recent RAM bar in your tasks menu. So if I was to long press on the home button here, it'll bring up my recent task menu or page screen, whatever you want to call it. And not only does it give you the um, um, RAM usage across the top there, which actually in my opinion um, for this particular ROM, for an AOSP based ROM, is actually quite high. Um, lately it's actually been bouncing between 450 and 560 for me, and you'll notice that these are all the tasks I have open. Now, if I was to go into the re, um, into the running applications, there was about four running applications, which still doesn't make sense why um, it's using so much RAM. But you'll also notice we do have a kill all button. So if you do have quite a few applications open, go ahead, tap that, and you'll notice that, uh, whoops, whoops, by, by getting back into there, there's nothing else left. And that actually just lowered it down by just a few megabytes. So um, a little bit concerning there, mind you, it's still a huge work in progress. Android 4.2.1 ROMs are still like, in my opinion, some others may completely disagree. There's a lot of really, this can be used as a daily driver, but in my opinion, they're still in early beta stages, especially when I'm seeing stuff like that. And if I was to point out a, um, a flaw in this run that I myself has exper have experienced, I haven't really read in the forms that anybody else has. Um, when I have my Gmail account set up and I receive notifications in the status bar, I go to pull down the notifications and there's no email there. So I actually have to use the actual Gmail application to jump in there myself. Um, which is a little bit frustrating, but hey, that could have just been a bad flash on my part. Uh, we'll move on from there, jump into lock screen here. So obviously there's a bunch of different things you can do with your lock screen. Uh, minimize lock screen challenge. Uh, what was that? Set whether the lock screen challenge circle pattern. Yeah, that's boring. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, long press. Okay, so let's say for instance you close this down and you're navigating between the um, widgets on your lock screen, you can just go ahead and hold down the lock button and instead of swiping it and having to get back in there, it'll just unlock the device for you, which I thought was really, really cool. And again, this is where you can actually uh, select the uh, widget carousel that I showed you just a, a minute ago, swiping between them, pretty cool stuff. Volume wake, pretty standard stuff, as well as all the volume music controls, so you can just use your volume uh, rockers to skip forward and so on uh, between the songs that you have playing. Um, what else can we do here? Um, allow all, this is really, really neat. Allow all widgets. So we'll tick this as well as allow unlimited widgets. So that means that you can actually have as many widgets on the lock screen as you want. Although as you can see there, it, it, a bit of a disclaimer saying that it can cause lag. Um, so we'll go ahead and take that just for shits and giggles and I'll cut this off or shut it off, shut it, uh, turn it back on again. If it will. Yep. And we'll get back into there and you'll notice now that we actually have access to every single widget in my app drawer. And I can prove that to you 
by getting into the app drawer, heading over to the widgets, and you'll notice that we have access to all those widgets here right on the lock screen, which is really cool stuff. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump back into the settings menu and we'll kind of move on from there. Of course, we've got themes. There is no preloaded themes, but obviously you can download them if they're available. Uh, performance control, there's also an application or shortcut, if you will, uh, located in the um, app drawer that you can access all this performance type stuff. So if you wanted to muck around with the, um, uh, to overclock it, change around the governor and the IO schedule, scheduler, scheduler, if you will, uh, free memory. Um, you got all kinds of great stuff in here. We're not going to get too in depth there because I could go on forever. Uh, what we will start looking at however is root box settings now in here there's a bunch of really cool stuff you'll notice pi controls a lot of you guys are probably familiar with paranoid android we'll get into that in just a moment you'll also notice we still have chronos although they i believe they've changed it now but um because of that recent cease and desist letter that cyanogen mod got but uh, again that's a story for another day um pi controls so as you can see we've got it all set up here ready to go you can change the colors and i'll show you what we can do i believe i have it set up to the bottom so I just kind of swipe up from the bottom now the thing is and I know a lot of you guys out there are going to disagree with me and that's totally okay but I've talked with a lot of other YouTubers such as myself who do a, uh, a ton of um, custom ROM flashing and if you're running a device that has capacitive buttons I don't care how you justify it um, on screen buttons on a device with capacitive buttons is the most pointless thing in the world because you're turning a 4.8 inch device in this case the Galaxy S3 into basically a 4.6 inch device and um, a display for that matter and that's just silly but regardless some of you guys like it some of you guys have your own justifications and that's okay so I'll show you guys something here now generally like if you were to launch uh, or flash paranoid Android there's actually got quite a bit of different settings um, or even LMT launcher on its own, which is, of course, an, uh, a root um, required or a launcher that requires root. Now, what we can do is um, with this one, they've actually dumbed it down quite a bit and taken out a lot of the custom settings, I guess, to kind of like make it that much easier for folks like you and me. Um, but uh, at this position here, if I was to swipe off to the right there, it just dims your screen immediately. Really, really dark, too. Um, and if we were to uh, head off to the left there, then it's supposed to, oops, see this is the thing, it's a little bit finicky, um, it likes to reset the position, so if I, I'm sure if I was to bring it in from the right, no, is it going to be coming from the left, no, and it's disabled itself apparently, jump back in there, we'll go back down to root box settings, jump back into Pi control, and we'll find where the gravity's set, now it's all of a sudden set to the left, so isn't that strange, right, put it back down to the bottom, and if I was to go off to the, there, there you go. And then it has this sort of slide in effect with your uh, quick access toggles, which is kind of neat as well. Uh, we'll just pop back into root box settings one more time and back into Pi. So you can obviously change the different styles, colors, things like that, the sizes and all that stuff. It's up to you. Personally, I prefer not to have it on my device because, again, I have capacitive buttons that do all that for me. Um, moving on from there, you've got lock screen targets, uh, all the usual lock screen stuff that you can imagine, um, screen security, expanded desktop. Now, this is kind of interesting. Hardware keys is something that I like. Um, however, if you have, say, for instance, this, this is what I like to have. Now, I like to have my home, cre my home key, I'm sorry, long pressing enables the torch, okay? The only problem with that, and, and the reason I like this is because if, for instance, I'm at the lock screen, and, and I suppose I could always have a target set up on um, this uh, uh, unlock circle here on the unlock wheel, but I really prefer having to press uh, long press the home button and it actually activates my flashlight as you can see there. So um, that's kind of neat. And then of course, if you wanted to, you can long press turn it on. If it'll turn back on, are you going to turn back on for me? Yep, turn back on and then long press again to just kind of disable it. So I like that. However, if you do have that enabled to long press on your home button, um, you won't be able to access your recent tasks menu um, by long pressing on your home button anymore. It kind of disables it. So that's a little bit disappointing, but it makes sense. So it's kind of like give or take, right? Uh, what else have we got here? That's pretty much it for there. Um, in here, we also have these module management things. So, I mean, really, you can get in here and really start customizing the framework and how um, applications look um, depending on the DPI you set with them and stuff like that, which is all done through per app settings here. This is something I've never really been interested, um, particularly myself, in doing. But if you wanted to, you can set um, a customized DPI per app. So if you wanted to have the App Store basically display what it would look like if you're running a tablet or YouTube 
YouTube or Netflix or whatever it, it, the case may be, um, the options there for you, which is always really, really nice. Uh, what I do love about this ROM, like a lot of other new 4.2 base ROMs or even just Jelly Bean and Up, as well as I suppose Ice Cream Sandwich ROMs, um, we do have an updater. So if there are any updates, it takes you right into Goo Manager. You can go ahead and check for updates. And if there are any available, um, it'll do a quick check. Now, I don't have Wi-Fi turned on or data turned on. That's all on my Nexus 4 at the moment. So, but it would check for you, download it, boot you into recovery, flash it, boot you back in, and Bob's your uncle. Anyways, guys, that's the end of that. Um, thank you so much for watching. This is a really great ROM. I do recommend it for a lot of guys out there, or a lot of you out there, guys. I'm sure there's ladies out there as well. Um, it's stable enough, definitely stable enough for a daily drive, and it's uh, certainly fun to play with. Uh, that's it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, shoot me some love by hitting that likes button down below, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. And if you want to stay up to date on all my videos, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.